Hello again, I am Blunty. In today's exciting episode of my videos, we're looking at the Xperia Play, the PlayStation phone. Now, for this device to be a success, it has to succeed as a gaming device and as a mobile phone. Quick recap before we get rolling in the review, the Xperia Play is the first of the PlayStation certified Android handsets to hit the market. There have been no others announced, but it's supposed to be a platform, so there should be more coming out sometime if this works out. Now, if this device is going to be a success, it has to work as a gaming device, and it has to work as a Android handset, as a regular phone. So I'm going to take those two aspects of its personality and review them separately so we can get it covered as clearly as possible. Now, we're doing gaming first. Why are we doing gaming first? Well, because if you're buying this phone, you are interested in mobile phone gaming. Otherwise, you would go for something like the Xperia Arc, which does everything this does, but it's smaller and lighter, but doesn't have all the gaming goodness. Hardware first, naturally. It looks much like most of today's smartphones do, albeit, like me, a bit chunkier around the middle. But it's chunkier because it does this. A slide-out full-on PlayStation control pad, which was not designed by the nerds who made the rest of the phone, but it was crafted by a different expert team of nerds. The same people, in fact, who designed the controller for the PlayStation 3 to make sure it was done the way gamers would want it done. It feels really nice and solid and surprisingly comfortable to hold and use. It's even complete with shoulder buttons around the back, which feel okay. Maybe slightly spongier than my own personal preference, but to be fair, that never actually became an issue in gameplay. The D-pad and buttons feel great, very responsive and with a nice tactile feeling when pressed. The start, select and menu buttons are all recessed flat so you really can't accidentally hit them while playing and those twin analog pads work very very well too, but we'll get to those in a moment. Sliding the device open automatically launches a custom Xperia Play menu system where you can select games you've got installed and also browse the Android market for new games. There are really three distinct breeds of gaming for the Xperia Play, Android, PlayStation and emulators. First up, let's look at the Android games, and there are already more than 50 titles that have been specifically optimised for the Xperia Play and its game controller. Now, you may well ask, why do I need an Xperia Play for these games? Most work just fine on other Android devices using touchscreen controls. And that's a fair question. But it's a question only people who have yet to try an Xperia Play will ask. Because aside from the advantage of not having to actually cover up part of the screen you're trying to play with your own thumbs, and touchscreen gaming being the absolute fastest way to cover your screen with layers of finger grease, having real physical buttons that you can feel when you press them, having controls that don't obscure the game you're trying to see, and having controls that feel absolutely natural and instinctive to any gamer out there is a huge advantage. And aside from all that, the controls on the Play are simply very, very good game controls in their own right, even compared to other proper controllers out there. They're highly responsive, accurate, and feel precisely how they should feel. It's clear that a metric crapload of care was given to the design of these controls. And yes, I know I'm sucking at this Bruce Lee game, as I will also suck like the vacuum of space at all the games I'll show you, but hey, you try playing these games through a camera viewfinder with your arms wrapped awkwardly around a tripod, smartass. It ain't easy. So, what of those analog pads? Well, there's no moving parts here. They're not sliding pads like the PSP or 3DS have. They're a touch-sensitive surface that's very slightly recessed. They each have a very slight nub in the center and a ring around the circumference. These give you little tactile clues as to your precise position on the pads and let you very easily and intuitively keep your thumbs where they should be. Unlike the on-screen attempts at analog controls, you'll never accidentally drift off these and wonder why your guns are no longer gunning or why your race car has exploded sideways into a nearby apartment building. I was initially suspicious about how well these touch pads would do at replicating twin analog sticks, but five minutes in a twin stick shooter like Age of Zombies really let you realize how natural these feel and how accurate and responsive they really are. I obliterated my old high scores using the pads as opposed to what I did with on-screen controls. Some games, of course, will give you an option, like Asphalt 6, which you can play with the analog pad or the D-pad. For this particular game, my personal preference was for the D-pad. It just felt a bit more precise for my style of pretend driving in this game. And again, playing with the controller instead of the on-screen controls or steering by accelerometer by tilting the whole device felt like a whole new world. All of a sudden, I was smashing my old times, and I didn't look like a complete twat pretending my phone was a steering wheel. Bonus. 
The second breed of gaming on this flagship PlayStation certified device is, of course, PlayStation games. Many of these are and will be ports of classic PlayStation 1 games, which is a very, very good thing because there are some gems to be mined from those pantries. Yes, in this mixed metaphor, mining is done in cupboards. Don't examine it. But there's also likely to be some original games and cherry-picked ports from the PSP as well. One of my favourite games from the original PlayStation even comes pre-installed, Crash Bandicoot, widely regarded as one of the best 3D platformers of its generation. Hell, it'll even violently kick the shins in of many platformers of more recent times. I played Crash a lot back in the day, so I know it quite well, and I can tell you right now, it plays perfectly on the Xperia Play. It feels precisely as it should. It looks exactly as it should. It even ooga in an entirely accurate way. In every way, it is a completely faithful experience to the original, and it's still bloody brilliant to play. Okay, that's all fine, but what happens when you get a call while playing, or you want to check an email, or hit the web browser to find a play guide to help you through a tricky part, or whatever? Well, I'm happy to report that as soon as a call comes in or you hit the home key, the games will instantly pause and are treated like any other application on a multitasking Android device. You can switch back and forth quickly and easily at any time without screwing up your gaming. I even had Crash sitting in the background while I was playing another Android game, and you'd never have known. The PlayStation games also support emulation of the PlayStation memory card, so game saves work exactly how they should as well. You can of course fiddle with the controller layout, you can even assign your controller to player 1 or player 2 if you need to. You may have also noticed that Crash was faithfully playing in its original 4x3 aspect ratio, as all original PlayStation games were, and that left black pillar box bars at the sides of the wide screen. Well, if you don't like this for whatever reason, you can switch out to either a cropped mode or simply stretch the image to fill the screen. Some games will look just fine stretched out, some will look a bit weird. But if you choose to crop, please keep in mind that this may also affect gameplay in some games because now you're effectively chopping off the top and bottom of the game screen. And if there's information like scores, power-ups, maps, or enemies that come from the top of the screen, it will affect gameplay slightly. But you've got all three choices available to you, so you can do whatever you like best for whatever game you're playing at the time. And the best bit is you can even make this switch at any time, as often as you like, whenever you like, and you don't even need to restart the game after making the change. You're dropped back into the game precisely where you left it. Now, the third breed of gameplay for the Xperia Play is emulation of game machines past. Of course, this whole thing of emulators and ROMs is, at best, legally muddy, and at worst, very, very naughty. But I'd be doing a disservice and an incomplete job at reviewing this gaming device if I didn't look at its performance in this area, because whether they like it or not, there are many, many people out there who are looking at this device for precisely this purpose. So I loaded up a bunch of emulators for various classic gaming consoles right from the Android marketplace and went to town. Of course, step one after installing emulators will be to manually assign the controller configuration, as no emulators I tried have, at least so far, been patched to automatically support the Xperia Play's controller. But manual configuration is very easy, only has to be done once for each emulator, and only takes a moment. The processing hardware in the Play isn't the very fastest around in current generation Android handsets, but it has more than enough grunt to push these emulators around and get a big fat helping of classic gaming goodness. I didn't have the opportunity to test this at the time of the review, but I have seen video of a Nintendo 64 emulator running acceptably on the Play. And every predecessor to the N64 that I emulated worked beautifully. Absolutely smooth video, no audio glitching, and the screen was terrific, providing nice sharp images with no ghosting or other weirdness that you sometimes see from emulation. In fact, my experience with the emulators on this device very much mirrored the rest of the gaming experience with the Android and PlayStation titles native to it. Gaming felt entirely natural and fun. The control pad performed absolutely perfectly no matter what machine I was emulating or what game I was playing. It felt great and played great. The device itself just kind of disappeared. I wasn't thinking about emulation glitches or what setting I needed to tweak to get it to run properly or how much on-screen controls suck and get in the way. Nope, the only thing that was happening was I was playing these classic games. They felt right, they looked right, they sounded right, and they played as I remember them playing. 
and you get all this without having to hack the device and screw around with artificial firmware from who knows where. It just bloody works and it does so natively and flawlessly without compromising your security, without compromising functionality and without compromising your ability to stay updated with the latest official firmware and patches. I'd go as far to say that for the very, very naughty people out there who enjoy emulating classic games wherever they are on their portable devices, the Xperia Play is currently the very best option for a classic game emulation handheld. It just made me smile, a big, wide smile of nostalgia and joy over how easy it was to obtain that nostalgia and joy. So at the end of the day, you really only want one question answered. The Sony Ericsson Xperia Play as a gaming device. Hit or miss? <sighs> hit. Absolutely. Undeniably, unarguably, un anything. It's a hit. No doubt. I mean, that, that little pause I had while I was pretending to think about it, that was just for drama's sake. That was a pregnant pause just for the sake of building a little bit of drama. Didn't need it. Already knew it. Love it as a gaming device. It is, it is honestly terrific as a portable handheld gaming device. But like I said at the beginning of this video, that is only half the equation because for this device to work, it has to work as a gaming device and an Android handset. So in the next video, we're going to take a look at what it's like to live with as a phone. So until then, thanks for watching. I am Blunt Animal. Catch you next time.